This case takes us to Gesset, a small town located on the outskirts of Milan, Italy. There lived Mario Bressi, a warehouse worker, and Daniela Fumigali, a biomedical engineer. In 2003 they got married and in 2008 they welcomed Elena and Diego, their twin children. Everyone says that they were an exemplary family and that they spent a lot of time together. Especially when it came to practicing different sports since at the time of the events Daniela was a manager at a sports club. Little Elena was very good at skating, and Diego loved soccer, which led him to receive several awards with his team. For their part, Mario and Daniela loved hiking, so much so that at one point they bought a house that was in the middle of the mountains to spend time with the family practicing one of their favorite hobbies. In 2020 their marriage began to make water. They had been dragging several couple crises for two years and there came a point where 45-year-old Daniela no longer felt the same for her husband also 45. Because of this, during the confinement that occurred due to the health emergency, she asked him for a divorce. It is important to mention that the man was not violent nor was he previously denounced. They simply did not understand each other as a couple and as she fell out of love she wanted to separate. In addition, everyone says that Mario was a good father so it was impossible to predict the tragedy. When Daniela raised the situation with her husband, he made no objection and agreed on everything. They were clear that custody was going to be shared, so thanks to this good disposition by both parties, they started the procedures without problems. Everything was going so well that they decided to continue living together until the signing of the papers. But what Daniela could least suspect was that Mario under that calm appearance and good vibes began to hate her more and more for having destroyed their family. With all this situation, we move to the day of the events. In June 2020, Mario planned a trip with his children to the house they had on the mountain. At first Daniela was going to go with them but her parents were so sick that she decided to stay with them to take care of them. The first days the father and the children dedicated them to enjoying the mountain and doing different activities together. Their mother called them every day to find out how they were doing and to say good night. June 26 was Friday and after an excursion they arrived at their house where, according to several neighbors, the children were playing in the garden. That day Daniela could not contact her children. At first she did not give it importance because she thought they would be distracted by their activities. However, the next day she discovered several text messages that Mario had sent her at 3 in the morning and that left her terrified. In them the man told her that she would never see her children again and that she was going to be left alone. He also asked him to check her email. Daniela found a letter sent by her ex-husband in which he confessed that he never agreed with the divorce and accused her of having destroyed their family. But the most shocking thing was what Mario put at the end of the letter. After reading the email, Daniela, increasingly desperate, tried to contact her children and her ex-husband again, which she didn't get because their mobile phones were already turned off. Without thinking twice at 7 in the morning she went to the family mountain house to see what was happening. Unfortunately, she found a terrible scene there. Elena and Diego, 12 years old, were lying in the lifeless marriage bed. The woman shook them as she shouted that her little ones did not wake up. The screams were so loud that they alerted the neighbors who came to the house to see what was happening. There they found the desperate woman because her children were not breathing so immediately notified the authorities. The emergency team was only able to certify the death of Elena and Diego. Daniela was clear about it and so she communicated it to the agents. Her ex-husband was the person who had ended the lives of her children to take revenge on her. So that they could check it, she showed them the messages and the email she had received the night before. With all this information and since there was no trace of the man in the house, they issued a search and capture order. On the afternoon of June 27, agents found Mario's car parked in the vicinity of the Victoria Bridge a place that is sadly known for the number of people who go there to take their own lives. That's what the man did and that is that at the bottom they found his lifeless body. The investigators also discovered that before taking his own life, Mario posted a photo with his children on Instagram of the last trip they made on the mountain. In the snapshot you could read, with my boys, always together. With all this, it was confirmed what Daniela had told the agents that Mario wanted to take revenge on her by taking what he wanted most, her children. A pain that will undoubtedly accompany you throughout your life. Sometime later it was learned that the autopsy determined that the children had died between the night of June 26 and the early morning of the 27th. Diego was suffocated with a pillow and Elena was strangled. 
The only thing they couldn't know is if the little ones had been sedated before. A neighbor declared that at three in the morning he woke up from some dull noises that he heard at Bressy's house and that he could not identify. Let's remember that around that time the parasite sent the text messages to Daniela. The researchers believe that he did this as soon as he took the lives of the little ones. On July 4, the funerals of the little ones were held and it must be said that the town where they lived was so shocked that hundreds of people came to pay their respects. The Archbishop of Milan released some passages from a letter that Daniela wrote for her children. Mario Bressi's family and friends do not understand how this man of affable, kind character and who never argued with anyone could so coldly end the lives of his children by the simple fact of not assuming his divorce. Daniela always said that he was a good father and that if she had had the slightest suspicion she would never have left his children alone with him.